Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. Today we've got a crazy story about a father loving somebody they really shouldn't. But first, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. That said, our story of the day is from throwaway942278. After years of hardship, my father destroyed my family after he confessed his love to my cousin. Okay guys, this is a long one. I've been having problems with my opinion on my father and my mother by association and I honestly don't know if I'm justified or if I'm being stuck up. I want to highlight my life to this point, one to vent to strangers online and two to really explain my situation. My father and my mother were extremely poor as I was growing up. I had a very happy childhood and I never went without. Sure, there were things I wanted but I understood that my parents had no money. So, I never gave things like vacations or toys much thought. I was raised to believe that family was everything, and because of this, my sister and myself were raised alongside my five cousins. I was the only boy out of all of the family's children, so my dad and my uncle were very big influences in my life when it came to a male father figure. When I reached middle school, my father landed an extremely good job. It paid a lot of money, but he was no longer at home. He would travel for months at a time, only to come home for a week, then leave again. This caused no friction or relationship problems with him and my mother. They stayed loyal to each other over the many years he worked there. I also had no problems. My sister and I would speak to him on the phone every night, and later when Skype became a thing, we would video chat sometimes. This is where, in hindsight, that the problems really began. Even though my family was close, I was always sort of an outcast, or black sheep if you will. I showed signs of better than average intelligence as a child, and while I've always been meek and soft spoken, I often felt smarter than those around me. I know that's a really egotistical thing to say about myself, and I no longer feel like that as an adult. As a child, however, I found myself questioning things that other children, especially where I live, don't really think about. We didn't have a computer until my father got that new job. So when I began surfing online, I finally started finding other people like me and seeing worlds that I'd never experienced before. That made me horrifically aware of how poor and redneck my family was. I questioned that even while my dad was now making more money, why the heck are we still so poor? I was going through an angsty phase of wanting materialistic things, and of course, the other kids, when I got to 8th grade, begun making fun of my clothes that were always from Goodwill and Walmart. I put together a well-researched budget with Excel and presented it to my parents when my father was home, and it did not go well. My parents both screamed and yelled at me about minding my own business, that I was just a kid and I didn't understand how money works. They said that it was insulting to them and that I was raised better than that for trying to help them. In their mind, which is partially true, I just wanted money for myself. After a grounding, many tears and apologies, I begged for their forgiveness. They explained that they're doing the best they can to provide for me and my sister, and for a while I accepted this as the truth. It was only a bit afterwards that I began to notice things being off. First, when tax returns came, my dad pursed his dream and bought a motorcycle. Then, sometimes later, they bought a new car. This struck me as odd, and it stayed in the back of my mind for a while. It was super exciting as a child, especially for me, to get these new things, but it kind of made me feel uneasy. Fast forward, I really dove into the internet as an escape. I joined some forms and stuff for my interests and started making friends and acquaintances. It was around this time that I started getting into music and really wanted to go to my first concert. In a nearby bigger town, there was some emo band that I really wanted to see and tickets were $25. When I asked my parents, of course the answer was they can't afford it. And of course, I was angry. I was ranting with some form friends online as well as some of my IRL friends through MySpace. And one of my good friends, Dave, told me that if I would help him with his YouTube channel that he was trying to start, that he would give me an old bass guitar that I could sell. This was obviously a very long time ago and the details are fuzzy, but I ended up selling it on Craigslist to a fellow for 100 bucks. That was a lot of money to me, and I was amping myself up to ask a girl to go to the concert with me when I got the tickets. I remember my father driving and meeting with the man himself with me in the car to sell the bass. I was so happy and excited driving back, constantly talking about the band to my dad. 
I never noticed that he had put the money in his wallet. When Friday came, I came home from school and asked my dad if we could go buy the tickets, and he solemnly told me that he and my mother needed to use the money, that maybe when they tour again, I could go next time. This absolutely shattered my world. I felt so betrayed and robbed, and when I told the girl that we can't go, she started being very toxic towards me. I don't remember much of what she said, but one thing stuck out to me. She told me, you stink really bad anyway. That bothered me for a very long time, and honestly it still does to this day. I was always a germaphobe, so I really kept clean. The stink was all because of my parents. They chain smoked indoors constantly. They did it in the house, in the car, everywhere. I became hyper aware of the smell and the consistency after this event, and I began blaming them for me being bullied so bad in school. I was talking to form friends again after all of this had died down, and they told me that my dad's theft of my money was very alarming. That even with just smoking, that it doesn't make sense that my parents have no savings. They suggested I investigate them, that I should snoop around because it sounds like they were doing drugs. I had never been exposed to anything like that before, and I thought it sounded insane because my parents were Christians and never even drink, let alone doing drugs. I did snoop though, and in my dad's broken down truck, I ended up finding a jar that had been painted black. I opened it up, and it smelled horrible, and I didn't really know what I was looking at for a moment, until I realized it was marijuana. Nowadays that doesn't really bother me, but as a kid in that dare time period, I was absolutely devastated. For weeks I couldn't look my dad in the eyes, and I was incredibly anxious around him, as well as mad, because I blamed him using my money on drugs. Something happened, and I ended up telling my mom through tears what I found, and she began laughing and sat down with me and my dad to explain that it was just my dad's, and it really wasn't bad. That made me feel better, but I still had a mistrust eating away at me. It was the summer after school that a real change became apparent. Me and my sister were arguing about something petty like taking the last soda, and we went to annoy mom about it. I still clear as day remember my mom spinning around and screaming in our faces, You two brats are driving me freaking crazy. Go to your rooms. My mom had never used a curse word, let alone that one. Me and my sister were so shocked that whatever our argument was was quickly forgotten, and I spent the rest of my night consoling my sister as she cried in my arms. Something was really wrong here. Things afterwards slightly went back to normal, but my mom was always in a horrible mood no matter what was happening. She was always angry and quick to snap at us, which caused me to really descend into computers and editing. The internet was my escape, and I felt at home there around people I liked with interests that I was learning and understood. My grades were always good, but they really went up in high school. I found my confidence and began taking advanced classes on my own as well as tech classes and I became a whiz in things computer related. I believe it was 10th grade when I discovered that my parents were both buying and addicted to Vicodin. I don't remember how I found out or what happened, but my mom claimed to have fibromyalgia and that it helped her with her pain. I was incredibly jaded at that point, and it's been in more recent years that I realized really how badly that destroyed my family's finances and integrity. We lived in a trailer. My dad owned the land, and it always bothered me that if they'd saved money, they could have built a house or financed a better trailer to put out there. It was whenever they started taking those pills that they just stopped caring about anything they owned. The car they bought kept tearing up and needing repairs, and my dad always refused a mechanic and would do it himself, which led to my mom finding rides with family to go to the grocery store when my dad was on a trip almost constantly. It always seemed like when my dad finally did get home, bills were paid, then they were broke. It eventually came to a point where my mom would collect half of his checks from his job during a trip to be able to afford to live. You might be asking, why would they do that? Why go and collect money? Well, readers, this is the point that I realized I wasn't just smarter than people around me. My parents were just completely stupid. They didn't believe in bank accounts. You read that right, they had a mistrust of placing money somewhere they weren't able to collect it. So no direct deposit, no savings accounts, no secure way to handle their money. They had no credit. In fact, my mom's credit was so horrid because way before I was born, she got a tech degree in some field she never worked in. 
My mom never worked a day in her life to that point. She had a degree, but never used it. So that meant she didn't pay off her student loans. To this day, I shudder to think how much money this woman owes. So no credit, no bank, and a pill addiction. Things weren't looking so good for them, and they began to realize it. They had a breakdown of sorts. I'm sure it was because they couldn't buy their pills at all. They started cutting money anywhere they could. Insurance was the first thing to go. It was health, car, and home. They stopped paying certain bills consistently. This caused me horrible pain because internet was one of those things. After an entire summer of ramen and sorrow, my dad discovered a miracle drug on one of his trips with a gas station powder called Kratom. Now, I don't really know what Kratom is. My parents are obsessed with it. I never really looked far into it because at that point I'd stopped caring. In its defense, they did kick the addiction to Vicodin fully, but they replaced one vice with another. While Kratom was much less expensive, I assume they started saving money again and getting back to a good place. They started hand rolling their cigarettes to save money as well, so life kind of balanced back out for a time there. I had a very pleasant senior year, got a girlfriend and finished with great grades, and even managed to get some scholarships. I was ready to go to school, but my parents convinced me to wait and decide what I want to do with my life. My mother was insistent that college was a scam and that I should just stay home or go somewhere local. Thing is though, the car was still in shambles. I had yet to get my driver's license, and there was no way their car would pass inspection to even take the driving test. I reluctantly agreed and spent the summer playing games on my computer, watching my friends begin their lives, and growing depressed. Staying home for that year would have consequences in my life that I still have a hard time deciding if it was a blessing or a curse. My dad's boss offered me a job doing the same type of work my dad does. Of course, I accepted it, and I even got to work with my dad. For the sum of four months, I worked around America with my father, and I was extremely happy with the money I was making. I became closer to my dad, we had many late night talks, and I started to really appreciate all the things my dad had done as I was growing up. I would think back to how silly and selfish I was when I was an angsty teen, and how now things didn't seem as bad or dire as they did at the time. I now know that to be wrong. On the bright side, however, all that time out of my backwoods town exploring the world gave me a whole new perspective on life and my future. I listened to lots of podcasts, learning about industries and the economy, and it brought me to the decision that I really did want to go to college. To my parents' disapproval, I opened a bank account and started saving money. I ended up saving quite a lot in anticipation to get myself a car. I did splurge with my first paycheck, of course, and bought myself a new iPhone 4 or 5, and I was so happy because I earned that. It gave me a taste of what I could accomplish if I was just smart with my money. That's when I lost the job. It came as a blindside, and I was told that it was just temporary from management. I didn't have enough money yet to get a good car, so I decided to take a portion of the money I'd saved, and I repaired the family car and got my license. I started applying to other jobs around my area while still getting ready for school, and I continued to play computer games with friends. I was up late one night and stepped away to use the bathroom, to which I opened the door and was met with a face full of black smoke. The trailer was on fire, and my door had shut out all of the smoke. The smoke detectors had never went off. Later I found out it was because my mom had taken the batteries out when I was still a kid because their chain smoking set them off constantly. In an ironic sort of twist, I loved steampunk and gothcore, so I'd bought some surplus army gas masks. Even though it probably didn't do much, I threw the one that was on my bed frame on so that I could see and rushed to my sister's room. She was asleep and so was my mother. Acting fast, I ripped them both out of bed, throwing a wet towel over their heads and got them out of the door, grabbing my two cats on the way. My mom called 911 while I threw the cats in the car so they were safe. We didn't go back inside because it wasn't safe, but at the same time we couldn't see any flames, just smoke. After all of it, the firefighters found out that there was an electrical line under the trailer that pests chewed through, and it caught the insulation on fire and basically had an entire inferno underneath the trailer. The smoke came through the vents in the house, but because the trailer was manufactured in the 80s, it had a large metal plate separating the house and the underneath. 
It was only because of that plate that the house didn't burn down. If I'd went to school after graduating or if I didn't lose that job, I wouldn't have been there. And my mom and sister, along with my cats, likely would have suffocated in their sleep. This is where my personal life became very lucky. While my dad, my mom, and my sister all seemed to have had constant bad luck, they moved in with my Aunt Jess temporarily while I moved in with my girlfriend. My best friend Mace hung out with me one day and took me to eat and buy some new clothes, his treat. He then took me aside and explained that I've always been a good friend to him and that he wanted to help me. He told me that his grandfather had left him a very hefty inheritance and that he wanted me to go to college with him. He gave me a check for a thousand dollars for books and he told me that he contacted the college. It was a few days later that the university I was interested in wanted to offer me a four year grant that was specifically for students who had went through a disaster. I was floored. I've never had someone put that kind of trust in me. And while Mace and I don't always get along, he's still the best friend I could ever have. And I was honored to be the best man at his wedding. Mace doesn't want anything to do with my family though. Once again, in hindsight, I was being gaslit. But my parents convinced me to give them the thousand dollars as a down payment for renting a new house. This got them a new place to live. But during that time, my dad was unlawfully fired from his job. I begged him to find a lawyer, but his response to anything involving the police or legal system is that ACAB and that no judge would ever help him. So he just wouldn't try. It was this point that I realized they'll never listen to me no matter what I do. I decided screw it, they can do what they like. I went on to school and during the semester, my dad sold the two acres of land that he owned to have money while he looked for a job. He sold that land for $3,000. He never attempted to get it appraised. Some guy out there built a beautiful house on the land and got it for a steal. So he gets a new job, does really well, and things look like they're going up. My parents actually gift me $100 every month for food at school. I was working, of course, but that was something unexpected. I would come home in the summer, work jobs that I somehow easily found, and save my money. I never once owed money for books during my time in college, and I actually ended up buying my first car. It was from a local near my college, an old Jeep that was very taken care of. The man who sold it was very prideful of his vehicles, and he ended up getting along with me pretty well. It was honestly really cool. We talked about what I studied and did for school, hobbies, work, and he sold me the Jeep for almost 65% less than his original ask if I would photograph his daughter's wedding. I tell you this because it was my car. I was so happy because it was special. I earned it on my own merits and I was proud. That summer when I returned home, my parents' car gave out. During that time, I was so focused on my car, I didn't really think about them no longer sending me money because I never needed or asked for it, let alone expect it. They had once again traded one vice for another, while Kratom was still present, they were now eating steaks and burgers almost every night. It was like an easy $300 a week on groceries for them and my sister. This led to them borrowing my car, and while I was very hesitant, I let them because they needed it to be able to get to work. I had a ride to my summer jobs easily, so I didn't really mind. When it came time for school, I asked if they'd saved enough to fix their car, and they both just gave me a look. That look told me, I'm not getting my car back. They dropped me off at college for my third semester, and I felt defeated. My college friends were super sympathetic, and my god, I don't know how I got such good friends over the years. Despite the bad stuff going on at home, when I was at school, I was flourishing. I finished off my year, and right when it was getting time to leave, my parents were kicked out of that house. Turns out they had missed payments. I only learned that later. I was on their side and mad during it all, and once again, I begged them to consult a lawyer. This landlord forced them to pay property taxes, and I know that's illegal for a renter in my state. It was the same answer. No one would ever do anything to help me. They move again to a slummy house this time, but I think the biggest heartbreak when I arrived was my car. It was destroyed. Despite me asking them, they had smoked inside. There were cigarette burn holes in the seats, trash everywhere, spilled coffee that was never cleaned. They absolutely had backed into a pole, and I could tell the headlight was replaced because the metal around it was scratched to heck. I assume they also hit something. They had truly stolen my car. We moved into this crappy house. I got lice there for the first time in my life there. 
ticks, bugs, the water was lightly brown. It was horrifying to think of all the mold that was growing there. You could smell the septic tank through the sinks. They had to keep them constantly plugged. I couldn't stand it. I ended up working that summer and staying with Mace and my girlfriend the whole time. So I go back to school and I'm doing fantastic. I end up getting nominated behind my back for a merit-based contest thing and I went a trip to LA for a week with two other students and a professor to go and tour media studios as well as go to a professional conference. I was so overwhelmed with joy. I called my parents to tell them my achievement and was met with instant hostility. My mother yelled at me over the phone that that was ridiculous and I had no business spending money because my dad had just lost his job. All my joy was torn away from me. And now I was just at a loss. I never got the chance to even tell them that it was all expenses paid. All I was worried about was my parents. Now it fell to my sister to pay their bills. My sister was fresh out of high school and was being forced to pay their bills. I did go and had a great time, of course. It was one of the biggest highlights of my life. If I ever tried to talk to them about it, they would ignore me. I graduated cum laude and I won an award from the department I was in. I was so touched and humbled because the award wasn't annual. It was truly special and my graduation was one of the happiest days of my life. I was actually getting ready to walk across the stage when I heard someone whisper my name. I turned around and it was two of my internet friends I had never met in person before. I was in tears going across that stage. I remember looking out across the stage and I saw my dad. He was asleep in his chair. Afterwards, my friends took me out to eat and we went and played some games as a little celebration. All my parents had to say was they were proud but they had to get back home. My dad actually lit up a cigarette in the middle of the crowd at the school and a custodian told him he couldn't smoke here, to which he got a snotty look on his face and flicked it into some grass. That was a great embarrassment on what should be a parent's greatest day. I go back home and things are bad. The house is getting worse and you can actually feel how sticky everything is with cigarette tar. During this time period at school, my dad had become addicted to sleeping medication. He was actually eating them by the fistful. My old jeep was now broken down and my sister got rides to work with her friend. During this time, my girlfriend's parents kicked her out for reasons I don't need to get into. My parents ended up asking her to help pay rent, which then turned into them expecting her to pay. I was having a bit of a hard time finding a job this time, but I got a gig editing videos for a YouTube channel that paid enough to allow me to save money and help out with the costs of my parents. A day came that we paid bills up and I asked my dad if he had any luck finding a new job or getting interviews. It was like I was talking to a different person. He was so messed up on sleeping pills that he would literally dip his head down while talking and would shock back awake. There was no way I was funding an addiction this bad and I refused to ever give them cash. If they needed something, I would buy it. This went on for a bit. And then I found out my dad was almost arrested because he was caught shoplifting. I had enough. I had to leave. Me and my girlfriend saved up very frugally, and even though I really didn't want to, I financed a car. I was having interviews, and I accepted a job in a major city four hours away. We quickly packed up and moved to an apartment. Things were rocky for a bit when it came to my parents, but it forced my mom to finally get a job, and my dad as well. Then the pandemic hit. My girlfriend and I were fortunate enough to not be horribly affected, but my dad was laid off almost instantly. During this time, he was wrongfully arrested for the first time in his entire life. The police had the wrong guy, and he got out of jail in under 12 hours. I insisted he contacted a lawyer, but nope. He tried to get unemployment and is still waiting for it to this current day, and he still has yet to find another job. It was far too late to help even if I wanted to. But early 2021, they were evicted for not paying rent. Turns out they read that our state wasn't allowed to kick people out if they didn't pay rent because of lockdown, and they ran with it. They didn't pay rent for a year, so of course, they were kicked out when the bill's time was up. They moved in with my aunt again. This entire story is what's led to this moment. They lived there for a few months. My mom, dad, and my aunt and uncle. My youngest cousin, 22, would bring her newborn baby there to get away from her abusive boyfriend. It seemed like it was all going well until last Friday. 
I woke up to a flood of texts from my pregnant sister. My mom called her and told her to clean out the guest room my sister's fiancé has because she and my dad had to move in with her. My aunt kicked them out and she wouldn't tell my sister why. Turns out my youngest cousin got a bunch of text messages from my dad's number. My mom made it seem like it was a bunch of sexts, so they wanted me to defend my dad because he said he was hacked or spoofed. They wanted me to show proof that that could happen. So I asked to see the messages. My aunt had taken pictures of my cousin's phone, so I know they weren't fake. But also, my extended family wouldn't know how to fake messages anyway. My mom was refusing, so my sister waited for her to sleep and sent them to me. The messages were my dad confessing his love to my cousin, that he had developed a crush on her. It was all very juvenile, like a middle school boy asking out a girl. They tried to say my dad doesn't do stuff like that, and my dad insisted that he was spoofed and someone was trying to mess with him. He was blaming my cousin's abusive boyfriend. But when I read the messages, it was exactly how my dad talks, down to the same particular emojis. It was creepy, but not sexual. But somehow that made it worse. It's like he wanted my little cousin to run away with him or some crap. I couldn't talk to my dad, and my mom begged me to tell him I love him. The thing is, he's not the man who raised me as a kid anymore. This behavior, and the intrusion of them moving into my sister's home, has shaken me to the core. I said something to him along the lines of that I love him, and that he'll always be my dad and he had nothing to respond. My mom said I might as well have told him I don't believe his story and that I stabbed them all in the back. So readers, would I be the jerk if I just cut contact here? I just don't have the will to continue this charade. I have a lot of money saved now, I'm in good standing, and my partner and I are in the process of buying a home. I don't ever want them to know. I don't want my parents to be homeless, but at the same time, I've given them all the help I could in the past. I don't think I can go through with this again. The idea of them just showing on my doorstep actually horrifies me. I feel so deeply sorry for my sister and I'm absolutely going to help her financially. I just don't know what to do or say. This is all so messed up. I can't compare myself to OP and what they went through, but there was a time in my life where at Christmas, I had a relative that was over and... Everybody knew what was going on, but when they couldn't just stay awake for even a conversation, it's kind of grim to look back on. I wasn't that old. There was a time where I was sat right there next to them on the couch, just me and them, and I was trying to talk to them, and every sentence or so they would just kind of drift off and dip their head back down. It's an incredibly difficult thing to see a relative just kind of change in a way like that. They're not really a different person, but it's just kind of hard to see anybody like that. Considering everything that went on, would you blame OP for cutting off contact with their own parents because of this? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another entitled parent story that was even crazier than this one, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, click on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.